here we go! Welcome, Collective, to another great episode of Brews and Builds. And this episode could not have been done except by our amazing patrons. Whether you're part of the Collective, Squeeze Choir, Big Tux, Mr. Combo, Storm Count, it doesn't matter. We love you guys and thank you for the support. Hey guys, welcome to episode 125 of CMD Towers Brews and Builds. I'm Mr. Combo number five, and my fellow host is the nemesis of reason, <laughs> Big Tuck. I think you've used that one before. Well, guys, a great way that you can support CMD Towers is to head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash CMD Tower. We have four different tiers for literally a dollar a month. You can get into the Discord. You get entered into a bunch of ways to interact with the cast on our episodes. Uh, or for five, 15, or 25, you actually get swag um, and continually get new swag whenever we do come out with new drops. So patreon.com slash CMD Tower. Now, if you're an existing patron of the collective and you have someone you want to refer, just make sure they message us on Patreon. We do have a great referral program, so if you get someone to sign up, depending on what tier, will kind of depend on what free swag we send you. So be sure to grow the collective. Now, we do have a great store. It finally is up and running uh, after a weird WordPress WooCommerce decided to give us the, uh, the bird uh, and just shut down for however long it was shut down. Uh, did get orders shipped out at cmdtower.com slash merch. That's where you're going to be able to get our amazing uh, Jund sweater. That's where you're going to be able to get our foil play mat, our uh, mat sleeves, our reminder tokens, coins, all of the different accoutrement you need to bling out your cardboard. So be sure to head over to cmdtower.com slash merch. Also, you've probably heard myself and others talk about their amazing playtest cards uh, that we've used in the past, whether it's uh, when we play with our local play group or even when we do specialty episodes uh, like the uh, Najila episode upcoming or even the Game of Thrones episode. You should head over to abyssproxyshop.com, use the code CMD Tower to get 10% off your order. That is stackable, so any other existing discounts on the website, you will get in conjunction with your 10%. And the great thing is every order you do with them, CMD Tower does get a little bit back so we can keep the lights on and continue to improve that content. So if you need a play test or proxy card, abyssproxyshop.com. This video wouldn't have been able to be done without our video engineer at underscore T coats. Tyler does all the video editing for CMD tower. So be sure to follow us on YouTube, watch the videos, let us know what kind of content you want to see. So that way we can constantly improve it and get those numbers up. So Bruise and Builds is our deck tech series. Since we conquered the path to 32, the 12 themes of EDH decks, we have moved on to the classic brew from day one, Bruise and Builds, uh, with a traditional episode. So we described the brewing of decks similar to how beer is brewed. So we broke it down into four different categories. One of my favorite areas, how does your deck actually close out and win games? We actually call that yeast. And, I'm, and I hope you're bringing the heat on this one, because I need, I need you for it. Uh, and these are living microorganisms that eat the sugar from grain and poop out alcohol and CO2. It adds the alcohol content without the carbonation. Without yeast, you'd be drinking flat sugar water. And without yeast cards, your deck wouldn't meet the goal of actually winning the game. So without further ado, let's get brewing. Boom. Today, we, in episode 125, uh, Big Tuck beat me to the deck, so therefore I can never build this. Oh, uh, you wanted to build this? Build Built the best Ashiok tribal possible with Umpress <laughs> imbuing was... nightmares in your dreams. So this is Umbrus Fear Manifest. Well, it sounded like Tuck needed some help. Uh, so now we're here at how we close out and win the game in the yeast. We don't have lots of options. So let's see if we match. What's your first one? It's Planeswalker. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, I, I I just figured let's get this all the way. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ashiok, Ashiok Nightmare, Nightmare Muse. Muse. What a house! I three color I, legend, Demir, legendary placeswalker, Ashiok <sighs> Mythic. Suck God, it. God, that's a lot. All right, here we you go. You got too excited. You got too excited. I just knew, like, as soon as I put this in this deck, I was like, Mister Combo's going to fall head over heels for it already. I'm sure you already had this lying around in your pile to build this with. So. Plus one, create a two, three blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Minus three, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand. Minus seven, 
You may cast up to three face up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. Uh, great effect, decent effect, great effect. <laughs> it's just like it's bonkers, right? I mean, I run this card in my planeswalker deck because that plus really? one. Oh, it's a it's a blocker that. Hey, if you want to come at my planeswalkers, you're gonna be exiling your library. I it's great, and I think like. I know what what was your story on this? You bought a pre-release one for twenty dollars. So, <laughs> I bought the alternate art foil. Uh, I pre-ordered it for like twenty or twenty-five bucks. Because I mean, honestly, I read this card and it reads Commander Bait. Yeah, like five mana is right there in the middle. Plus one protects itself, impacts the entire board. Minus three further protects itself, and then minus seven possibly casting stuff for free and i will say the minus seven is more fringe and non decks like this yeah sure but i thought it read very very well uh but turns out uh no it doesn't (laughs) i this is probably i i I think this is maybe one of the top five best cards in the deck right i could see that because like it just does everything right um, I think even if the minus three was just bounce something, there's planeswalkers that do that that are good. But the fact mm-hmm. you also get to exile another one, another plus one, plus one for Umbrus, um, I, it's just like such value over time, right? And to your point where thinking about when to cast Umbrus, you're going to have these effects that are just going to start filling up these exile piles that are never going to go down. So even yep. if you do this incidentally over the course of a game, this card might alone pump, what, 10-10? 15 15 into Umbers Maybe. Cassim. Maybe. It's just got it's got everything you need. Well, the first one I wanted to talk about is one of the few ways that you have to really give Umbris unblockable. So you can kind of do that Voltron-esque strategy. Um it's very cheap. It only costs one. So, you know, it's kind of nice. Uh Aqueous Form, Enchantment Unreal. Aura. It's, it's a common enchant creature, enchanted creature can't be blocked. And whatever enchanted creature attacks, scry one. I genuinely can't believe this card's only fifteen cents. It's. I'm not it's, saying I'm not. It's not multi dollars, but it's probably a quarter to fifty cents. I would think. There's this like, if you are running a deck that cares about commander damage in blue, that's a commander card. You're just putting this in, right? Uh you have to. I think. Right. There's no option. I, I don't yeah. think so. Like. It only sucks because the only downside is that it's an enchantment. So if someone gets rid of Umbris, you're kind of out a card. But the yep. barrier for entry is so low, right? And if you don't, and if you, if he's too big to cast, you just cast this on Cyrus Stagnation or whoever else, and you're just going to start punching for damage, anyways. I actually disagree. I think you literally save this until <laughs> Umbris is a 70 70, and it's like, oh, you guys are all tapped out, but you have a billion blockers. Here you go. Yeah. I kill you. So uh, because you talked about it, you don't have Graveyard Recursion. You definitely don't have any ways to flicker an enchantment back to no. your hand. So this is a one-time use. So think of this in this deck as a uh, cantrip. I'm yes. probably only going to get one shot with it, hopefully. Um, and that's why I think you have to save it for Umbris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's, just, it's just such a beating. <laughs> All right, well, why don't you give us your second East card? Okay. I have started to fall in love with this little guy in similar ways that I fell in love with the Bubs because this card is also a little baby bubble cat, but he's a lot more of a nightmare. He's a lot lot more of a nightmare than Stouty is. We're talking about Falthus, Shadow Cat Familiar, two colorless and a black for legendary creature, nightmare, little baby bubble cat. That's a 2-2. Commanders you control have Menace and Death Touch, and as partner, which in this deck doesn't matter. It also has a little bit of things here. So here we go. Tamiyo, a.k.a. the Sorcerer Supreme. Uh, the, uh, what's her name? Tilda Swinton version. Tilda. <clears throat> yep. All right. She sticks to her chosen master closer than their own shadow. Ten cents. It, what more do you want? You play, you play Umbris, you play this. You're gonna gain. You're gonna start blasting through creatures. Menace, I think, is an underrated ability. Uh, yeah. We when we played our budget, when we played the, our budget decks. By the way, all I had some of your inclusions in there. Thought Gorger, Slam Dunk. It oh, was yeah? great. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> um, there, I think 
of the three decks that were there, or of the five decks that were there, three of them had this card in it. And every single one of them, it was good. Such a low barrier for entry. If someone, it's again, forces someone to be like, do I want to spend my sport, my swords on this or on something else? The fact that it's a 2-2 kind of sucks. Like it eats up, it dies to pyroclasm, right? But Menace, Death Touch, it's incredible. And on top of that, it's a little baby bubble cat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's good. Three mana. It gives uh, two abilities. I mean, I will say this. This is a big risk because you only got one commander. Yeah. And if it dies, you're not getting it back. So this is just where I think I would challenge you to where you're going to have to do what I had to do in Garza Zol. Like, how much am I just being way too cute with what my commander does mm. versus like how the deck is trying to function and operate? I can 1000% see you cutting this card very sooner rather than later, probably for a mana rock. Yeah, I mean, I need I need to cut two for two mana rocks. So man, man, might be there. there. Might be there. Um, well, the last card I wanted to talk about has a laughter that is quite hideous. Oh, it's it, this card. Kasha's hideous laughter. It's Colorless insane. blue, blue, sorcery for a little under five bucks. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled cards with total man mana value 20 or more. Who is apparently laughing while telling this text? It works out perfectly because it's Bellatrix Lestrange, Vraska Golgari no! Queen, your favorite. Yeah, we're back. No! Baby. Yes, no! believe it. The Raging Fear. We're back. Open its terrible maw and collapsed in a fit of horrifying giggles. <laughs> oh God, kill me! You're just anyways. Ready. Now you're now you're primed for Harry Potter world, right? I guarantee you this girl's gonna be walking around there and just getting ready to be yelled at. Uh, actually, you know what's funny? More often than not, you see people cosplaying as Dolores Umbridge at harry potter world who the is that? annoying the annoying older chick that had all the cats on her wall that were all pink and was always like <laughs> oh she's and like she a was like an awful terrible human being she's like a blonde right yeah yeah oh yeah she is annoying i remember the one movie i've seen of harry potter she features in it prominently and yeah it's very upsetting yeah it is uh so here's the thing though a lot of people look at this card and they immediately say broken busted because they're in their head they're thinking that opponents are going to be exiling 15 to 20 cards no. <laughs> no. That's why the card's three mana. Uh, most likely, you're probably getting, I would say, between three to five. Mm -hmm. That's what but, I was going to say. But for me, nine to 15 cards for three mana is totally worth it, especially in this deck. Right. And again, like, okay, fine. You exile five cards a person. So Umbris now gets plus, five, plus 15, plus 15 at the worst, right? Even yep. worse than that. Three mana to give. If there's a card that said... Three mana, your commander gets plus nine plus nine until the end of the game. It would yeah. be in like every deck, right? And that's the mm -hmm. worst case. Like some people might, someone's playing like a low to the ground token deck or like a weenie deck or something like that. You might even be able to hit five, eight, ten if you get really lucky. But the absolute floor for this card, guys, is uh, literally you exile two Titan Eldrazi's from yeah. their deck. Yep, exactly. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Or an expropriate and a Titan Eldrazi. Yes. Like, think of your way, way over the top cards. Like, are you okay exiling two of those? Yes. Yes, you Cra are. A Crater Hoof and an Eldrazi? Yeah, I'll take that all day, right? Yeah. Don't care. A couple lands in there, too. What's not to like? Well, why don't you give us your final Yeast card? Okay, so this was a recent addition that I was really excited about. And mm. it replaced a card that I think... I'm interested to hear what your thoughts on. So I'm talking about winged boots. Oh, so a, different. A colorless and a blue for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has flying and ward four, which pretty much means frost titan four, if you will. Whenever equipped creature becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls counter it unless that player plays four. It's got to equip one and it's got a little bit of text being read by our old pal. Chicago broadcasting legend. Rest Harry in peace. Carey. Harry Carey. <laughs> hey. You ever want to get carried away? I got carried away once. Uh, then I ate 16 hot dogs. I'm Harry Carey. <laughs> so this was a cut for uh, Whisper Silk Cloak. Oh, okay. And the reason why I was talking with my friend out here who plays very tuned decks. And his point was like flying in most of the time flying is going to mean unblockable for at least one player. Right? Okay. 
That's how he said it. And then Ward 4 is kind of like Shroud as well, right? So Whisper Silk Cloak, fly, unblockable Shroud. Okay. This one, because my commander is so prohibitively expensive, the fact that you can play this on two and then equip for one, as opposed to three or two, whatever Shadow, or whatever uh, Whisper Silk Cloak is, the odds of being able to get this onto your commander, the turn he comes down or the turn after goes way up for slightly worse abilities. And when you're having a deck where the CMC is already so high, I think that is worth the trade-off for adjacent enough abilities. Yeah, you're basically saving a total mana because it's mm. three to cast Whisper Silk versus two. Equip is two for Whisper Silk versus one. So I would agree that if you're at the point that you're trying to get your CMC lower and there's no other cards you could cut... Okay, I could see you doing the trade, but if you start going through the deck tuck and you start seeing like, you know what, there's there's stuff in here we've really kind of stretched, mm. I would put Whisper Silk back in. Back in. Kind sure. of like the point I made around Crystal Shard. Yeah. If you're going to have one of these effects in here, then you should be able to justify having a second effect yeah. just for that redundancy. Not You don't need 10, but I would think two always makes it feel safe. Yeah. Um. So that would be my thought. I would almost say you leave Whisper Silk in instead of this, um, and then your cheap, easy one is the Aqueous Form. But mm, if you said, hey, yeah. I'll do Winged Boots instead of Aqueous Form and put Whisper Silk back in, I would still be okay with that. Oh, so, sure. Right, just because Aqueous is like one and done. One like time. You, like I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting point. I like it. Well, guys, that's going to wrap up how Umbris wins games in the yeast package. Mm -hmm.